What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. Tonight, I've got Cap Mike and Cap Nazi on here. We're going to talk about spring fishing patterns inshore, trout, redfish, flounder, all of it. This is my second take. I screwed up the first one, so uh, this, you're going to see my better half here. But we're just, I'm a little tired of winter fishing patterns. I'm tired of the drama that comes with wintertime fishing. I got chewed out today for something that I, would, I shouldn't have gotten chewed out for. I didn't do anything. Uh, but that's just how it goes. And I'm ready for summer to be here, for fish to be broken up and for winter to be over i'm ready for some i'm ready for some tan legs some tan back backs of my legs from pulling the skiff around in the hot summer sun and ready for some happy warm fish not pissed off fish that want to run away from the sound of a push pole tinking an oyster shell so um if i if if, if y'all are with me let me hear an amen Amen. There we go. All right. So I want to talk to y'all before we get rolling about the sponsor of tonight's podcast, and that is J&J Boat Services. They're a full uh, detailing and dive specialist boat detailing service. So the cool thing about them is they will come to your house. They'll come to your marina. They'll come to your boat lift. They'll detail your boat right there, and uh, you don't have to do anything. It's pretty awesome. Um, They've done my boats. They're just spotless and perfect afterwards and just a great – you know, a great way to start off the season. And so we actually have a code EC2022, um, and that's 10% off your first, um, but that's 10% off your first service, your first boat detailing. Uh, like I said, they come right to you. Um, they do everything, um, the entire boat. They cleaned out my hatches, you know, from the water on up, they waxed and buffed and everything. And the boat just looks awesome, but uh, just great people over there. They do an incredible job and it is hands down the most professional, honestly, probably the most professional company that has to do with boats whatsoever that I've ever dealt with. I mean, they are on point and uh, you will definitely not be disappointed with the work they're going to do. I'll have all their information. It's here if you're watching the video on the slide I've pulled up, but I'll have everything listed in the show notes for the podcast on the podcast platforms as well as the YouTube description. So y'all can find that stuff there. Um, But yeah, thank y'all so much for sponsoring tonight's episode. You guys, y'all are going to talk about some, let me pull y'all up, some spring patterns. Let's do it. The pattern that I'm most excited about is the pattern of winter drama fading away. (laughs) (laughs) It just always seems like you're step on someone's toes here. If you go over here and this is this guy's area and this, and I'm like, who freaking cares? Let's just, I'm just going to go fish where the fish are that I found. Yeah. And, and, and it's just so, so, so annoying. (laughs) So sick of it. Yeah. And my wife's sick of it too. (laughs) I want to hear a little bit about uh, what happened today. No, I can't get into it. I can't get into it. Oh, man. I'll share it with you later on. I just can't do it on the podcast. (laughs) Um, I I, I totally agree with you, though. Um, Following the fish can sometimes get a little dramatic, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Especially with the crowd that's on the water every day. Um, Yeah. So. It, it, It can get dramatic. All I'm going to say is Cameron is going to need some serious dental work done. Cameron Pappas. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, it, that and just I, shocked me. And I would be terrified to punch any human being. So it would <laughs> it would never It would have to be me whacking somebody with my push pole probably from like 10 feet away and speeding off like a coward. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be that would be me, but um, but no, I'm just ex- I mean all around excited for springtime fishing. Um, you know, we I've been starting to see more and more flounder around as I'm pulling a skiff around. Um, so actually, that's probably what I'm most excited about. Is some flounder starting to show up. They're just um, a fun, nice little bycatch, man. Just a good little yeah. I mean, fun to target too, but it's really nice when you're like blind casting for redfish and pick up some flounder along the way. Yeah. So. It's a good little mood booster in the middle of the day when yes. you're, you know, kind of getting your butt kicked or yeah. spook a couple fish, whatever, and then you get that little random flounder that snags it. So, and they're going to start every year around this time of year. They get very patternable as they start coming in the inlets. Yeah. Yeah. So. They nope. can be a God's, uh, a God's deep breath sometimes if you're struggling too. Like, okay, we're going to catch a few flounder. Like you said, they're so patternable predictable um and uh they're a safe bet so sometimes if it's in you know the the truth of the matter is sometimes even as guides we struggle a little bit and um and it, you'd say it's, it's easy in the springtime to be like okay we're gonna go catch a few flounder and it can be a deep breath like okay there's a few fish in the boat at least so uh, yeah. i definitely look forward to that yeah it's uh it's nice i just like when there's 
more species and short a target, which is fun. So I would say flounder. I would much rather catch flounder in the ocean. I love catching flounder in the ocean. I mean, I love catching them inshore too, but redfish and trout kind of steal my, my heart inshore. But, man, catching flounder in the ocean is, is a hoot. Um, but, yeah, we'll talk about the inshore. I'm going to get – oh, my gosh, I'm so so bald. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Looks it looks the worst when my hair starts to grow back in. You can really just see that that nice line there. Um, by the way, this is just a little plug here. Um, these hats, the Queen Street Barber hat, it's, it's a really good fitting like dad hat, like a little. I guess you call these a five panel. Um, but I just ordered. I got a bunch of these hats in that I'm going to be doing some stuff in. I've got some Richardson hats on the way, so be on the lookout for um, some Eastern Current and some Eastern Angling hats. They'll be up and and ready to to grab here soon. I'm doing. Just like short runs of, I'm going to do a lot of different clothing, a lot of different, or a lot of different, like, you know, sun shirts and, and t shirts, and then a lot of different styles of hats, but just short runs of them. So if you see something you like, make sure you hop on online and grab one. Um, do you go to Queen Street Barber? No, I don't want to hear. I was just wondering. I, was, I just had to ask. I just, I just like Hayden. Hayden's a very cool dude, and, and he gave me this hat. So um, I did used to get my beard trimmed by Hayden when he was before he'd started Queen Street Barbershop, but um yeah, never been there. Never been there. <laughs> um but with without that being I don't know how we've talked for five minutes about my baldness. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let let's talk a little bit. I think it'll be kinda cool to kind of me and Mike fish predominantly further south than you do. We have we have, oh, yeah. you know, different estuaries. Um, different types of fishing. What are some of the first patterns that you see, Ozzy, up where you are um, to kind of key into that spring fishing? Like, what what are you looking for? What happens first up there? Yeah, so um, I know I've talked about this before uh, on this show, but it is my um, my fishing log, which is somewhere behind me. Um, but anyways, I, I look for that. I look for water temps. Um, I look for when that false spring was last year or the year before that um and the false spring isn't in, like we're gonna have another freeze i think saturday's low is like 26 crazy or something like that yeah. it's like so, 50 like, mile an hour winds again oh i saw that that's a bummer uh, i wish it was duck season yeah because they, they're, they're gonna be moving um Help me. It's like, they're moving for sure anyways fast. i look at that i look at past um weather trends if you will and then um I look at what I was doing last year as far as spots are concerned um, and places. And, and when I say that, it's not necessarily spot dependent. It's more uh, what that spot was made of, meaning was it structure? Was it oyster bars? Was it docks? Was it um, water depth is big for me. Uh, temperature and water depth, they always correlate in my opinion. So um, I look for where I was as far as depth's concerned, when the water temp was X, Y, Z. Um, and then what I throw changes. So obviously in the spring, your trout's going to be spawning. So I'm going to up my, my bait. I love a slicket lure in the spring for my big trout. I love my 27s. Um, I'm not afraid of the TTs and the 52s when I'm, when I'm fishing for trout and I'm fishing, I pay a lot of attention to the bottom in the spring. I don't look, I don't fish a lot of oysters or, or hard bottoms, uh, cause those, those trout don't want to if they're carrying their babies on their belly essentially they don't want to be swimming around a lot of like oysters and stuff like that they're going to look for the um the grass the underwater grass and soft sandy bottoms and stuff like that um, if you see stingrays then you're probably in the right areas because a stingray is not going to swim on stuff that's going to hurt them so that's not a uh, a definite like you'll obviously so they will eventually swim over something tough but for the most part if you pull up to a spot and see stingrays or whatever then you're like okay this is this is somewhat what i need to be doing um th this is the right bottom i start looking at the bottom a lot and 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 in light of the trout spawning as far as the redfish are concerned um I, it's pretty exciting because those big schools of 200 and 300 or whatever they're starting to bust up a little bit in my area, and you'll see schools of like 10 to 50, and you'll get multiple shots at schools at 10 to 50 instead of one shot at a school of 300. And that's encouraging as a guide or as an angler or whatever 
because you've got 10 fish looking at you instead of 200 fish. So if you frig up, it's okay because you got another set of, you know, another group coming or whatever the case is. Um, and it's a lot harder to spook 10 fish than it is when you got, say, 400 eyes looking at you, if that makes sense. Definitely. Um, so um, Definitely. those are the couple of high points that uh, of the spring that I'm looking forward to. Um, but, uh, I mean, realistically, it could be feast or famine, I think, in the, in the spring because everything is moving, everything is changing. They're not in any one pattern. Um, excuse me. Unlike the winter and the summer where everything's predictable um, and you can pretty much count on fish being in certain places in the spring everything's moving every day can be different so that can be a little yeah. uh, nerve-wracking at times but um, overall it's pretty exciting you you got big trout potential you got per, uh, PB record setting trout potential and you got um, multiple shots at reds sight fishing so i'm yeah. I'm overall i'm pretty excited um t for the springtime for sure man I, I think that the the stingray thing too that just really stands out in the, in the fact that that's one of the things you really don't see in the winter in short here you know we're far enough north that you the stingers really push out so that's a big sign to me of like okay stuff is coming those fish are coming through the inlets from the ocean in shore because that water's warm enough they're pushing in shallower and right. that, you know, with that comes a lot of other baits and, and stuff like that. So stingrays are a good, you know, key. If you start seeing stingrays in your area, maybe start look tr transitioning from looking in those deeper sloughs in a creek or in a bay to like looking up real shallow in the bank or stuff, you know, looking into some, some more spring patterns. Um, Mike, what about you? What are some of the things down here around us? And I say around us, I mean, we're so, we, we, me and Ozzy and Mike, we all see each other on the water, but, um, we are a little bit further south with a different, you know, with some differences in our stories. What, what's some of the stuff that really keys you off in the spring? Keys you off. Um, I think, like, the biggest thing, like Ozzy was saying, is, like, the schools of redfish are breaking up big time. Um, you know, like, I won't say big time, but instead of going into a spot that you know, you know, is 200 fish, you're, you might be headed into that spot and you bump 10 or 15, and then you go a little bit further, you see those, like, smaller groups and you're gonna see them more movement or m moving more and like different tides yeah so you're not like as keyed in to having to find them at like a low tide or mid tide in one or two spots like you can kind of you can spend your time meandering around through the marsh and you're gonna bump into fish as you start moving um moving around those areas where those schools were located for the winter time um, the other thing, like you said earlier, I mean, we're bumping into flounder, you know, as we're pulling around, you're starting to see flounder show up, you know, a few here and there, it's going to queue in that, all right, the water's warming up, there's some bait starting to show back up. Um, I noticed the other day, like, not just a little tiny, like, micro bait or whatever that's, like, inch, inch and a half long, there's some decent sized bait around, two and a half, yeah. three inch, there's some mullet starting to show up, coming out of the grass, um... And then as far as trout, I mean, there's definitely some trout around, but I feel like our, I think the biggest difference between like where me and you fish, Judd, and where Ozzy fishes is just overall water depth and how much tide movement we have. Um, so seeing, seeing the trout show up in the same way, I feel like it's a little different. Um, maybe farther south, we'll see that same kind of trend, but in that clear water is very, very hard right now because the water is so clear. They're so spooky. Um, I feel like our trout pick, fishing at least kind of picks up a little bit more once that water warms up and kind of dirties yeah. up a little bit. So for sure, it's. Uh, I got on some trout today on the Marilou a little bit, which was fun. Um, so, were you out of Soap City today? Uh, I fit. I can't talk about that. I did fish south of there a little bit and 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 just north of there just a little bit. So okay. yeah, I was kind of around that zone. All right, so shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Outing me on the podcast, Ozzy. Um, I'm just, that's the second time now. I feel terrible. Yeah, you can ask those kind of questions afterwards. Uh, I did launch in Surf City. I fished. I fished north of of Surf City some, and I fished south of Surf City some. And I also put seventy dollars of gas in my Pathfinder today, and it didn't even get. I didn't. Even, wasn't even half a tank. Dude, <laughs> so let's not even touch on that right now. Yeah, I'm so. doing. I'm gonna do a surcharge. <laughs> I've started doing. I'm doing a fifty. I'm not gonna make people pay for all my gas, but I, I mean. 
I'm doing fifty dollars because it's it's eating into it so bad. So fifty dollars on on the trips for that, but hopefully it'll go down soon, or I'll buy an yeah. electric boat, one of the two. <laughs> um, trolling motor. As only. many problems as I have with a trolling motor, an oh, electric gosh. outboard is not the ticket. No, it's not the ticket. <laughs> We're not there yet. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's spring is just spring's a cool time. And like you said, it's feast or famine, man. It's, it's it can be. Don't settle into something. Just cuz you caught fish or you're catching fish in one place, be happy with catching 5 out of a school of redfish and then yep. going and finding something else and then going and finding something else yep. because it's constantly changing every every day from here on out until they settle into their summertime patterns. Uh, and and it, it you'll ha- you'll get especially if you're fishing a lot or if you're guiding you know, or fishing multiple times a week, take advantage of your time to go look and, and stay ahead because this, this this time of year will leave you in the dust. If you don't stay, you know, on, on your best edge and kind yep. of pushing forward, you're going to get left in the dust a lot of times with, with changing patterns. So. Yep. I feel like now more than ever, uh, it's it's important to fish on your days off. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I, maybe it's not the same for you guys, but I'm not booked every single day through March and April. Not every single day. And with that being said, it's it's more important now than ever that to to fish on your days off. Whereas come June, July, and August, I can I can put my I can bet on where the fish are going to be. But as of the you know fall and and spring, on the other hand, I probably need to be on the water regardless. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then my to Mike's point about fish meandering and breaking off, I'm definitely cutting my outboard off. Um, earlier than i would if in the winter time then i can probably motor up to those fish a little closer um than than what i can in the spring in the spring i'm probably gonna cut the outboard a little earlier in that marsh system or in that flat or whatever that bay and um i'm gonna pull or 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 troll the motor or whatever a little more than normally i would in the winter that's a group that's a pretty good point to that for sure for sure, I, they're, they're a little edgier, and and they'll they'll just one day you'll spook them in the spring, and then they'll just usually like oh they'll, you know I'll spook them and they'll slide right back onto this bank here, and then you spook them and they just yeah. never come back. They're yeah. like all right, we're leaving yeah. here. <laughs> yep, that's redfish for sure. Um, but but yeah, I, I think you know as we transition into spring, staying ahead of the you know ahead of the curve is is super important. Uh, you were talking about some of the baits that you like to fish, Ozzy uh, and yeah. and Mike, you as well, and I'll get into it, but. Um, why, you know, I would say let's, let's talk about our three favorite spring baits and, and maybe why those are on that docket. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead, All right. Well, I think it's species dependent for sure. Um, I'm starting to see some, and again, I don't have the current you guys have. Um, Eastern current. Yeah, that's right. Them South side swift current boys down there um eastern current they but in the and when the water gets warmer well we'll start seeing sheep's head and and black drum on docks we normally wouldn't through the winter and uh, it is a working theory but i think that has to do a lot with temperature yeah um so i will start throwing a lot of like different crustacean type baits on docks for sheep's head and for black drum that normally in the winter time i wouldn't I don't normally find in the, in the winter time. I don't find these sheep's head and black drum hanging out on these docks. So that's one thing I'll change with my baits, is I'll go back to my crabs and crustaceans, shrimp, uh, things of that nature, whether it be artificials or uh, live bait. Um, and then on the redfish note, I'm gonna break the old spinner bait out. Um, that's one of my favorite springtime baits. Uh, Falling tide makes a great. Um, and I have no connection to Fallen Tide. I just think they make a good product. Um, but redfish, definitely. Uh, spinner baits. I actually caught a fish, or my client, rather, caught a fish the other day on a spoon. A uh, big fan of a spoon. In in my watercolor, it's kind of a, it's tinted water or, or uh, tannic water, if you will. Uh, so we throw the copper spoon a lot. Yeah. And these redfish the other day were keying on on that copper spoon like crazy i mean it it could be a terrible cast and um the flash or whatever was was they were keying on that a lot uh whereas in the winter time 
that was a little bit flashy, um, a little bit uh, dramatic for them. It was yeah. a lot of movement and stuff. So um, that's exciting. You can fish. Uh, you can power fish again. You can throw that spoon, crank it back to you, and cover an air really well. Um, we also uh, yesterday, the day before, got through top water again. Nice. It was super, it was super cloudy up here, uh-huh. and um, it was just it looked like top water. It was like 65 degree water temp, which actually is my favorite water temp to fish in. And um, we were able to throw top water again and get a couple blow ups, and that was super exciting. I'm a top water enthusiast. We ended up tying a gurgler on and getting denied, uh, but I think that's a different ball game. But anyways, and then on the trout note, um, I'm beefing everything up. Uh, I'm coming away from that subtle, non-threatening uh, profile, like the, eating the Ned rigs and the small, um, the small swim baits and things like that. The 17s, I'm going to kind of put those away for a little bit. And I'm going to throw uh, TTs and 52s, um, 27s. The slicket lures are big. Um, I love a catch five this time of year. And um, is it, what's the other one? The catch 22? 20. Catch is 22. That, isn't catch, that like a. The, is it slender and long? 100 or whatever? Catch 2000? 2000. That's right. Catch 22. Isn't that. That's like, you know, what's the catch 22? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get there. Between the three of us, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but I'm switching over to that. I love a, I actually love a Catch 2000. Even if I can't remember the name, I throw a lot of it. And I like the one with the green back and the dots on it and the pink bottom. Um, and, again, that's just relevant to the watercolor I'm fishing. Um, and the from the New River to probably the Surf City Bridge, that's kind of the, the color I key in on. But it's the bigger baits is what's important. Yeah. Uh, three to five foot of water, bigger baits. Um, and we're also fishing for that big bite. And when we get into April and May, I really key in on that three to five foot of water. And again, like I said earlier, key in on that um, what the bottom looks like. And that's kind of how I'm attacking the trout fishing. The reds, on the other hand, to kind of circle back to the red fishing, I'm just covering water. Like, if there was a camera on like the north topsail bridge you'd see me go under that bridge like a thousand times in a day because i'm moving so much like yeah um i went to one of my uh bread and butter spots yesterday on a trip and got zeroed out and i was like oh crap yeah they're they're moving and so with that being said we had to switch it up and then and do a little more springtime type fishing and and it was able to pull a few fish out but nonetheless um if you're targeting redfish in the spring you, you, there's a lot of moving involved um but with the trout i'm i'm more focused on the depth in the bottom so that's sure. a long answer to your question but no that was beautiful that was beautiful um i don't do it in the spring yeah for sure no i think that you know that really hits the nail on the head as far as the importance of being versatile in the spring and not being stuck to you know any one thing and, and not being afraid to run back and forth. Sometimes looking for them. What about you, Mike? What are a couple of baits you, you really like and tend to gravitate towards this time of year? Yeah, I got to hop on the train with uh, Ozzy here on the topwaters. You saw me the other day. I was freaking itching to throw a topwater at him. Like, just that springtime and when that water starts to warm up, I don't know what it is, but like right around this time of year, every year we get a few warm days, and it just seems like it fires off like clockwork. Um, water temp definitely has a lot to do with that, but you're going to see a lot of fluctuation in that coming up. So it's not something that I'm keeping tied on all day or anything, but when I see the opportunity and I see that perfect day kind of roll around like Ozzy was talking about, warm temperatures, maybe a little overcast or something like that, tides in the right spot. I'm going to pull it out because I know they're going to eat it. Um, the other thing for me, I think, is probably just standard old Z-Man paddle tail. Um, covering water, a little bigger bait profile, either a three or a four inch. Like you said, getting away from the Ned Rigs this time of year and that small, small bait stuff. Um, I think for me and like where we're fishing at, you can target trout, redfish, and flounder. And with the flounder showing up, it's a nice little bonus. 
you know kind of where those fish are going to be sitting out. So as you're making transition from one spot to the next, whether you're pulling, trolling motor in, or with the big motor, you know, you can make a couple casts and you're stopping shy of where you're going to be fishing mainly anyways, looking for those schools. So, you know, a few extra casts with that around can uh, be a little bit of a game changer for the day. So I'm starting to step away from pure white. Um is a lot of what I throw during the winter, going to something a little bit more natural color. But, um, you know, in that clear water, gold spoons and stuff, they might eat it, but I feel like it's just way too much for them. Um, you know, busting out the spinnerbait, I can definitely tell, like, they, they feel it. They want it. They're trying to find it. They're looking for it because that water's warming up. Their metabolism's starting to crank up. But like you said, in that dirtier water, a little bit of tannic off-color stuff, whether you're down south towards the mouth of the Cape Fear or further north towards the New River, you know, those those areas come into play with the spinnerbait, I feel like, a little bit earlier than um, the rest of the areas that yeah. we fish, Yeah. So, which would be more of a summertime thing. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I'll kind of gravitate in our water to uh, underspin a little bit this time of year, like fishing the swim bait. On underspin, it's a little, it's still got some flash, but not quite as much. And finding that like right amount of aggression in your bait this time of year, especially on like a school of redfish, as well as like a school of trout or an area that has trout in it. I don't know if I call them schools. I mean, I guess it is a school of trout. They're all kind of hanging out in in a deep slough. And if redfish were hanging out in a deep slough together, you'd call them a school of redfish. So, um, just finding that right amount of aggression in your bait can like all of a sudden it, it's not enough aggression you're not really getting that many bites and you and you switch to that right bait that might be a little more a little less aggressive and and this you'll see that in the fish too um, yeah, i think underspins are underutilized underspin <laughs> underutilized <laughs> a little play on the words there but uh they are i think yeah. they're a hidden gem uh, yeah. who makes who makes the underspin that you like because i'm kind of in between baits there's that Roadrunner underspin that I fish a good okay. bit. There is a, uh, a Mega Bass underspin that I fish okay. some. Um, just like everything Mega Bass, it's probably the coolest looking underspin. Yeah. Also probably oh. the most expensive underspin. <laughs> um, and then there's one other brand that I've got. I actually also bought these underspin chatterbait combos. So it's a jig head with an underspin on it with a chatterbait blade out in front of it. Oh, and man. that joker will get choked. When the, it's got to be a little bit warmer, but man, they find that thing from like a country mile. And that sounds uh, like a scouting dream. Yeah, it's a scouter's dream for sure. Yeah, That's it awesome. says that on the packaging. A scouter's dream. It should if it doesn't. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a bass lure. You got to hose that puppy off when you get off the water. It's it'll rust out pretty pretty bad. But yeah. if you, I mean, if you put some fresh water on each time, it's fine. But right. but that thing, and you got to fish it so slow. Like otherwise, it wants to ride up, but. Not mm-hmm. so slow, but it's not like a spoon where you can like really kind of fish it pretty quick. Um, but especially like in your area where you might be blind casting open water up near the bank trying to locate fish, like you're not mm-hmm. maybe not up on the bank necessarily. Um, that 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 thing's pretty sweet. I need to look up who makes it again. I'll send you the link on it. But that's a it's a cool bait, and it's one that I don't pull out enough. But um, I would say my my three baits are a, a paddle tail. Either rigged, you know, as is, or on an underspin, or on a spin. I'm kind of like cheating because I'm getting multiple baits out of out of <laughs> one thing. But a paddle tail rigged a few different ways. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of like Mike said, I might fish all white, I might fish in more natural colors. I'll let the fish kind of tell me what what they want as far as how they're acting. Um, you know, and then I'll, I like a 17. I even like a 17 on redfish, like schooling redfish that are floating this time of year that aren't quite eating a top oh, yeah. water. Um, they eat a, eat a mirror lure really, really well. That's my, probably one of my favorite things to do is catch, you know, schooling springtime schooling redfish on a mirror lure. Cause yeah. it, it, you can keep it right in I'm their face. Right back. Yeah. I'm you're so, good. No, I'm you're right good. Back. You're good. And, uh, a top water, uh, like, like we've all said here, you know, when, as soon as you can start watching them blow something up on the surface, it's awesome. Especially this, t- this is the cool time of year when, um, you know, you'll have opportunities like this throughout the summer, but when you can actually really sight fish with a top water. You can see a group of fish, throw it over them, and uh, and bring it back in and, and watch those fish blow it up together, which is pretty sweet. Or you know, as a school, which is pretty sweet. But um, yeah, the underspin, the chatter bait is a great bait this time of year, where you're starting to search again a little bit. Our water's still so clear, but it's warming up quick. Like we'll start to see those microscopic algae blooming. 
before too long and then all of a sudden it's always so weird man i guess it's just like the change of seasons too you're like where did the cold go where did the warm go it's also yeah. like holy crap where's the clean water like I, all of a sudden everything's yeah. just dirty again um clean and then, water and you're like where's the clean water at and then you look down and it's just like wads of algae and everything from the winter growth like just flushing out of flushing the creeks out. you're like okay it's about to happen it's yeah. about to happen yeah. <laughs> you know you just any day once you start seeing that algae leave the bottom and start flushing out of the creeks you know it's right around the corner yeah i agree so, to I, hop in on the tail end of that it's exciting because that winter algae that i call it snot grass or whatever that snot grass starting to like peel off from the bottom and move out is exciting because that's so frustrating to fish around in shallow water like yeah. it's nothing's more frustrating to have a school of fish you lay down a good cast and you let it sink just for a half second too long and now it's covered in snot grass Just jumping in on the tail end of that conversation, that's exciting to see some of that grass move off. No, I'm with you. That that first little lift of the grass, though, like you said, is the most annoying time. When it's all still yeah. attached to the bottom, but also, like, elevated all the way to the surface. And, and yep. you got fish somewhere out there. Over. Yeah, it's all over the place. Well, is there anything else y'all can think about, uh, you know, that it would be, you know, we're going to die as spring progresses. We're going to do some more, you know, in focus talks about you know specific baits specific fish specific styles of fishing um but this was just kind of our general overview for the beginning of spring just kind of talking about you know really just talking about being excited to get out of this stupid winter fishing yeah so yeah i think the biggest thing like right now is start paying attention to where you're finding bait either in the creeks and the bays you see it on the waterway birds are another thing you know, as the season's changing, the birds are having to figure out, all right, where's the new bait going to be at? Where, What's next? What can I start feeding on again? Um, as they either are starting to show up or they're transitioning from one thing to another, one area of the marsh to another, the fish are doing the same thing. So, you know, those a lot of times are big key factors to kind of really trimming down an area for me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a great point. At least you know, to get started, um, when this transition starts to happen. For sure. So, For yeah. sure. Ozzy, you got any words of wisdom to leave us with? Oh man. Um, no, I think I pretty much covered it. Uh, just beef your profile up, pay attention to your depth. And, um, I think following the baits pretty big. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's something I probably do subconsciously, but follow the bait for sure. Um, I don't know how often you guys have to catch a bait, but I just recently, well, I just recently started throwing my cast net again, but that's mostly due because I'm a punk, man. I don't throw my cast net in the winter because I'm a baby. <laughs> I will gladly go buy the bait that I need through the winter, but just this week I started throwing my cast net again, and um, so that that's like a secondary hunt inside of fishing. You want to find the fish? But like at the beginning of the day, you gotta go find your bait, right? Um, and not every single one of my trips is uh, artificials and fly, so I do still have to go find bait and whatnot. And um, that can be a hunt with in within itself, uh, a, a different ball game altogether. It's yeah. finding the bait. But in the spring, I find that once I find the bait, that's typically somewhere about where the redfish are hanging out. So it's a pretty unique time of year. I might fish eight feet of water one day, and then tomorrow I'm I'm back on the flats. So, um, yeah. good luck. <laughs> yeah, I hope the best spring for you. But it can be, like I said, feast or famine. It's a it's a fun time of year. It keeps you on your toes, and um, all in all, it's a, it can be a record breaking time of year, especially for the trout. Well, definitely. It's a excuse me. I'm sleepy. It's a. Uh, it's a great time of year to be on the water, man, as, as it transitions it into the warmer months. And, and a lot of people enjoy it, fishing, as well as just getting out in the boat. And you'll see a lot of you know people out boating this yeah. time of year. Um, you guys, I have been slacking on the Patreon page the past two and a half weeks. Uh, we've been selling a house and buying a house all with uh, you know a bunch of guiding. We've been doing some, some photo work with Penn. Uh, and pure fishing we've been doing some filming for the youtube channel we got a new striper fishing video that's uh us three as well as our our buddy bud bishop from mott ridge charters up on the lower roanoke just had an awesome day catching a bunch of stripers that's going to be dropping 
uh, either probably Monday. I'm gonna drop that one Monday. Um, but we just have we're we're getting back into the swing of things. Um, I do apologize for for the the lack of content there for about two and a half weeks. Just been a very busy time in the family uh, with a lot going on. But but we're stoked to be um, right back at it, bringing it to you hot. And uh, if you do want some more Patreon content, we're about to slide over there, record a little uh, another little podcast episode over there. Uh, we're gonna kind of share with y'all the types of areas that we're finding redfish now this time of year. So if that's something that interests you, you want to support us a little bit more over there, uh, check out the Patreon page and we will see you next week. Later.